The Flawless Host are certainly an interesting warband in the 40k universe, with their garish colours and an unsettling tendency to paint their armour to resemble human skin, they present an unusual challenge to aspiring miniature painters, regardless of your level of skill, as the subtle use of flesh tones over an entire model can seem a tricky thing to get right especially if you want to create a scheme that you can use across a whole army, but when you're dedicating an entire army to Slaanesh, then you must strive for perfection, which might explain why it's taken me so long to make the Sonic Blasters, that and the fact that I can never convert just one model. In this video, we're going to be painting one of the tentacle possessed I made in an earlier video. I would have liked to have painted one of the Noise Marines alongside this guy, but I think they deserve their own painting guide once the Blastmasters are ready. I think it takes a lot of either courage or a lot of madness to spend weeks or months of your life painting Chaos Space Marines in such a ridiculous scheme. But at the end of the day, no one wants to fight against an army that looks this wrong. I actually attempted this colour scheme a few years back, following a flawless host painting scheme I found on Daka Daka. It had basically called for the use of Caraburg Crimson over Pallid Witch Flesh but the end result didn't look anything like what I had seen in the Codex, or should I say what little I had seen in the Codex, as there are very few images of the Flawless Host as points of reference for this colour scheme. After countless experiments, I have created an eye-catching colour scheme that should be easy for anyone to apply to a whole army of disturbingly kinky miniatures. I'm Dave from Warps on Games, and in this video I'll show you how I paint the most twisted marines in all of 40k. So if you enjoy this painting guide, please give the like button an especially slippery handshake, whilst remembering to maintain eye contact at all times. And with that brand new scar upon our psyche, let's swiftly move on to the painting guide. The secret to any good paint scheme is the ever ubiquitous Lamian Medium, but in order to use it most effectively, you'll need to acquire some pipettes. That way, you won't have to dip your paint covered brushes directly into the pot, just slurp up a couple of drops into your pipette, and add it to your palette when you need it most. The tentacle guy I'll be painting has already been demolded and sprayed with two thin coats of white primer, so for the base coat, we're going to be mixing Pallid Witch Flesh with Ulthuan Grey. We mix one part Ulthuan Grey to one part Pallid Witch Flesh, adding just a little Lamian Medium to smooth it all down. We don't need to paint the tentacles with this mix, as they are painted slightly differently from the rest of the model. Using a reasonably large brush, I apply this mix to the whole model making sure to get into the gaps between the armour, behind the shoulder pads, and any other awkward to reach places on the model. With this done, you can see the difference already. Sort of. To achieve the look of human flesh, Slanesh must be appeased with a six part concoction of doom, which consists of one part Gulliman flesh, two parts apothecary white, and three parts Caraburg crimson. Not forgetting to add a little bit of Lamian medium to keep our custom wash nice and thin. I then apply this wash everywhere but the legs, the backpack and the arms, as those parts of the armour will be going purple. The goal here is to get a thin, even wash over the armour. I mix up more wash as needed, ready for a second coat, and apply this to the same areas as before, making sure to wait for the first coat to dry properly first. It's important to make sure the wash gets into all of the crevices, such as behind cables and any gaps in the armour. With that done, it's time to mix up some more paint. This time it's Pallid Witch Flesh, Ulthuan Grey and Gene Stealer Purple. This will be applied to the lower armour for that subtle purple tone. This mixture consists of one part Ulthuan Grey, one part Pallid Witch Flesh and two parts Gene Stealer Purple. Apply a nice thin coat over the remaining armour, starting with the feet and the lower legs, then the arm and the hand, and finally the backpack, making sure to get into any gaps with the first coat dry. I apply a second coat of purple over the same parts of the armour, being careful not to spill any onto the lighter areas of the model. For the next step, it's time to pay attention to those glorious tentacles. I combine Ulthuan Grey, Pallid Witch Flesh and Emperor's Children, adding equal amounts of each paint with a little bit of Lamian Medium. I mix it all together to make this pinkish tone. I then apply this to the tentacle arm, making sure to get in between all of the gaps of each tentacle. With this done, you should have achieved a distinctive flesh tone. I also apply this mix to the claws on the power fist, making sure I get both sides and underneath each claw, whilst not spilling any paint on the hand. With this done, I mix up some more paint for the second coat. I then apply another thin coat back over the tentacle and onto both of his claws. As you can see, the basic colour is already starting to take shape, 
So I combine equal parts of Apothecary White and Drushi Violet, and I apply this wash over all of the areas I previously painted purple, being careful not to let it pool and form hideous tide marks. For the next step I'll be using equal parts Volupus Pink and Apothecary White. I'll be mixing them together as a wash for the tentacles and claws, and I apply the wash over the tentacles making sure not to miss any hard to reach areas. With the first coat done, I make sure I have plenty of wash still in my palette as there's lots of parts still to cover. I then apply an even coat over the claws. This achieves a nice and rich colour that contrasts nicely with the pale armour. I also apply this mix to all the gaps in between the armour. There are quite a few of these joins in the armour on these models so make sure you catch that large one in the back as well as the back of the legs and the knees. And finally, apply this wash to any tubes on the model. With this done we'll be using the same purple mix as before to wash over the purple parts of the armour, applying a decent coat over the lower legs and feet as well as the backpack. I also added a second coat of wash to the parts in between the armour as well as another wash over the tubes and the claws. I added another layer of this wash over the tentacles making sure to reach under the shoulder pad and in any gaps on the tentacle, all the way up to the tip. With that done we've gotten one of the more fiddly stages out of the way. At this stage I decided to compare this model with my previously completed marines. It's at this point I realised the flawless host have a little more purple on their trim, which it seems I had left off most of my guys. The other detail to note is that the arm bits on the backpack should also be purple, the exception in this force being that HQ choices generally have shinier backpacks. To correct this mistake I mix up a little more of the initial purple that we had made, by mixing together Pallid Witch Flesh, Ultraman Grey and Gene Stealer Purple. I apply this mix to the trim on the left shoulder pad, as well as the backpack vents that I missed out earlier. This step will now require a few coats to get it to the same stage as the rest of the purple, so I just wait for the first coat to dry before applying the second, and don't worry if you spill a few drops as you go. This can easily be fixed by applying a thin coat or two of the initial base mix we used, and then repainting the custom flesh tone so that the armour matches its surrounding. I also go over any spills on the legs at the split between colours. Next I'll be using Gene Stealer Purple and Cacophony Purple for the highlights. I mix together equal parts Gene Stealer Purple, Cacophony Purple, Orthoan Grey and Pallid Witch Flesh, not forgetting a tiny amount of Lamian Medium to slightly increase the flow of this paint. I will be dry brushing this layer on, so I wipe off any excess paint onto some kitchen roll. With the excess wiped away I'm now ready to highlight the purple parts. I take care to catch the edges of the armour and trim and get a nice smooth but defined highlight, being careful not to over apply and clump up the paint. With the legs done I move on to the backpack, making sure not to forget to highlight the top. Finally I carefully pick out the trim on the shoulder pads, making sure that I don't miss any of the edges. For the next layer of highlight I pick out a good soft brush for dry brushing large areas. I apply some pallid witch flesh and ultra and grey. Yet again adding a tiny amount of Lamia medium to the brush and wiping off any excess, until only a thin coating of paint is left on the brush. This is important as this layer must be smooth and subtle while still being an effective highlight, as this time I will be dry brushing over the whole of the marine. To achieve a smooth coat I move the brush in a circular pattern over all of the model, and pick out the different segments of the armour one at a time. Starting from the top and working my way down, paying attention to the flat areas of the shoulder pads the claws on the gauntlet and the lower legs, and not forgetting to gently brush over the tentacles as I go. With this done I add a little more shadow back to the model, by carefully applying Apothecary White and Drushi Violet in equal parts to darken down the purple areas, and add just a little more depth back to the colours. I tactically apply this coat to the purple, paying extra attention to the recesses and the centre of the trim, as well as any hard to reach areas, such as the hands and in between the claws. Finally I move up to the backpack, before dry brushing the tentacle one last time, making sure to go all the way around the tentacles and under the shoulder pad. With the tentacle nicely highlighted we move on to the wash. I take equal parts Apothecary White and Volupus Pink and mix them together with a small amount of Lamia Medium. I then use this final wash to darken down the tentacle. I apply it all over the arm, focusing on the areas in between the tentacles and at the top of the arm near the shoulder pad, as to give the shading a little more depth. At this stage a lot of the basics are already done, so now we move on to the smaller details like the leather belts. 
For this I took the unconventional approach of using equal parts Gene Sealer Purple and Storm Vermin Fur. I mix them together with a small amount of the all important Lamia Medium and then apply a thin layer of this custom colour onto all of the leather on the Marine, starting with his holster and then moving onto the leather straps on his leg, followed by his belt, being cautious not to spill any on the buckles as you go. There are quite a few of these straps on the front and back of the model, so watch that you don't miss any. With the first coat on the leather, you can start to get an idea of what the model will look like when it's complete. When the first layer is dried, I apply a second coat of the purple grey mix all over the leather parts again, repeating the method from before, by just painting a thin layer of paint across the narrow leather straps and belts. When it comes to details like these, it's important that you use the right brush for the job. I'm using a medium sized detail brush, as it covers the belt in only a few strokes without being so big that you end up spilling paint everywhere. With that task complete for now, we can move on to the metal parts of the model. To start this, I apply a thin coat of Iron Warriors over the silver parts of the model. I paint the chainmail on the front and back of the marine, watching out for the parts hidden under the loincloth. With this done, I add a little paint to the grenades on the front and back of his belt, as well as some of the cables in between the armour. And lastly, the skull detail on the chest plate. I repeat this step to achieve an even coating of silver, and then I move on to highlighting the leather. For this, I mix equal parts Storm Vermin Fur, Cacophony Purple, Ulthuan Grey and Pallid Witch Flesh. Using a small brush, I carefully dry brush this mix over the holster, making sure to pick out the edges and any raised detail. I then do the same on the belt and the leather straps, again focusing on the edges to create an effective highlight. Remember to apply a small amount at a time to avoid over highlighting. And with that done, I use some Retributor armour mixed with a little Lamia medium for the remaining metal pieces. Using a good sized detail brush, I first apply it to both of the buckles, and then onto the spike on top of the helmet, making sure that I get an even coating of paint on this flat surface. Finally, I move on to the backpack, as there's a few details to pick out here, like the skull in the centre and the top and side vents. With that completed, we move on to the metal highlights. For this, we'll be throwing around some Stormhost Silver. I apply a light coat of this over all of the dark silver details I painted a few steps earlier, such as the chainmail and the three grenades on his belt, and finally the skull on his chest. With this simple step done, I apply a second coat before moving on to the next set of highlights. For this step, I'll be using Liberator Gold to highlight the areas previously covered in Retributor Armour. I lightly brush this colour over any sharp edges, and to the centre of the skull and any of the vents to finish off the gold layer. Next, it's time to pull out a good sized dry brush, and add the final highlights onto the tentacle, paying more attention to the tip of the tentacle than under the shoulder pad to get a nice overall highlight. For this, I simply used equal parts pallid witch flesh and Ulthuan grey. Now from a distance, he's starting to look almost complete. So pushing onwards, I wash down the gold with Gullum and flesh contrast. I apply this around the edges and any recesses to add a bit more depth to the metal. Making sure not to miss any details, I cover the backpack, the spike on the helmet, and finally the belt buckles. With all the metal almost complete, I mix up equal parts of Stormhost Silver and Liberator Gold for the final highlight. I apply this to the edges and the tip of the helmet spike, making sure to catch it from front and back, as well as all the small details on the backpack, such as the vents and the skull. I make sure to highlight just the centre with this mix to create an effective highlight. As the marine reaches closer to completion, I draw my attention to the largest unpainted part, the loincloth. Human skin seems like a rather appropriate material for their loincloth, so I blend up a mix of one part apothecary white, three parts caribou crimson and one part gullum and flesh. This yields us a rather fetching flayed skin colour. I wash this all over the cloth and then wait for it to dry. For the bloody edge details, I mix Flesh Terror's Red with Caribou Crimson in equal parts. I spatter this dark red wash roughly around the edges for a nice gore effect. With the loincloth now done, I then mix Temple Guard Blue with Ulthuan Grey in equal parts. I then very carefully apply it to the eye lenses. I then use a small amount of Drakenhof Nightshade as wash over the eyes. I make sure to use a good quality fine detail brush here as it's by far the fiddliest part of the model, and you really don't want to spill any of that wash at this stage. With that awkward part done for now, 
I add a little more Apothecary White, Caraber, Crimson and Gulliman Flesh to the pale parts of the armour, focusing my attention on the centre of the shoulder pad trim, defining it a little more from the flat parts of the armour. There's no need to add too much here, as I just want to bring out the colours a little. Using the same wash, I move back to the loincloth, applying a layer of wash all over to darken it down a little more. With this done, I add a little more wash to the details on the chest plate, and darken down the side panels of the armour. At this stage the marine looks virtually done, but to complete the model fully I need to add a little more highlight to the eyes. I apply a very small amount of Orthoan Grey and Pallid Witch Flesh to my detail brush, and carefully place the highlight in the centre of the eyes. With one done, I repeat this for the other eye, before very carefully applying a little more Drakenhof Nightshade Wash to the edges of both of the eye lenses. And at long last, our Chaos Space Marine of the Flawless Host is complete, complete with kinky tentacles and all of the small details. Well, arguably to make these guys 100% complete, I should add some transfers to the shoulder pad, as I actually have a sheet of transfers I printed out that are ready to go, but I think I'll be applying these to the army once it's a bit more complete. I'll be sure to cover this in a future video. As you can see, this unusual scheme combines a lot of custom flesh tones and washed out colours, with some bright metal tones and just a few bold colours, to give an almost ethereal quality to the marine. The flayed skin loincloth also gives a hint towards their brutality, if the pink and purple tones didn't make them look weird enough already. At last you know the secrets to painting the flawless host. I just hope you use them wisely. This is Dave from Warps on Games. I hope you like this much requested painting guide. If you did then please promise the like button a video next week, and then proceed not to upload anything for several months. Don't forget to leave a comment with any requests for more painting guides, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future.